name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen, may the Lord who so promise his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, both now and ever into the age will age them. <clears throat> Today is the first, uh, sorry, the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Misra, and um, we're ending the year, uh, the year very soon, and um, what is generally the theme when we end the year? Yes, the, the end uh, times, right? <clears throat> um, and usually the church designates the last two Sundays for this, if there is a last Sunday, because the month is very short. Um, <clears throat> but actually, next week it's also the 29th, so we're not going to, the, the readings are related to the 29th. Um, <clears throat> so today we read from the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 13, um, and if Besides the exception of next the Sunday, usually we read the gospel from St. Matthew chapter 24, um, and then to next Saturday um, from Luke 21, and these are the three places where the Lord speaks about this. <clears throat> so as we said before, um, the reminder of the end of the world, or the second coming, or the judgment, the end of our life, it's all related to what's going on in the church. And um, the church says this is such an important um, theme that... If we don't read it next week, we have to read it this week. Um, and even if we do, we read it. Um, so um, the Lord is warning us to prepare ourselves for the second coming, which is fearful, yet also full of joy. Um, as many Christians in the early days would comfort one another and bring hope and joy by saying the Lord is coming, or, not, right? or in, in the Lord's prayers, we say thy kingdom come. But nowadays, um, when we talk or think about his coming, many people are afraid and concerned and worried and troubled and try to avoid the subject altogether. Um, <clears throat> but um, today we'll talk more specifically about one specific virtue that, that helps prepare ourselves for meeting the Lord. Uh, but for that, um, we'll just go to some of the fathers um, and see more specifically about not necessarily the end of the world, but kind of a lot of people have the, this question, what happens um, after death or in, in, in the short period, um, almost immediately after death, what are some things that happen? Um, uh, because as we'll see, it's, it, it's going to be related to how to prepare. Um, <clears throat> so St. Anthony had one of these experiences. And St. Athanasius writes it in his life story. Um, so one day, St. Anthony um, was fasting until the ninth hour as the custom. Um, sometimes he would fast two, one or two days at a time. But anyway, he was preparing himself to, to rise up to pray before eating. And all of a sudden, his soul left the body. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, St. Athanasius writes, uh, bent on preventing him from passing through. So, uh, sorry, before this, um, he saw uh, a group of angels es escorting him up. But then all of a sudden came uh, a group of demons um, to, to prevent. And this is typically, as the fathers tell us, what happens when a soul uh, leaves the body, um, whether good or bad. <clears throat> so there's kind of like a little um, uh, debate or um, almost a trial, as, as one of the fathers will say in a minute. So, <clears throat> um, so instead of ascending further, um, uh, he stopped. And St. Athanasius writes, bent on preventing him from passing through the, the demons, as his guides offered resistance, the angels, the others demanded to know on what plea he was a, a, not accountable to them. It's like, how come we, we're not in charge of this soul? Why do you guys get to bring him up to Paris? <clears throat> uh, then when they set themselves to taking an account from his birth, um, he said, well, he did this and this wrong. So they're starting to accuse St. Anthony about his actions before, um, s since birth. Um, and, and then St. Athanasius says, they brought accusations, but they couldn't prove them. The way opened up to him free and unhindered. And he started going up again, but then all of a sudden, um, it wasn't God's will for him to depart, and he found himself back in his body. Um, <clears throat> and um, he even forgot to eat that day and spent the rest of the day in prayer, um, 
just contemplating on what he had experienced. <clears throat> so um, why are we bringing up this story? Um, because the job or one of the main roles that the devil uses is to accuse us before God um, of our weakness. <clears throat> Sometimes things are true, but this is basically his job. As uh, St. John mentioned in um, the book of Revelation, um, after the devil and his angels get kicked out of heaven in, in chapter 12, this is in the, in the past, right? Um, he says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser, the devil, of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so the devil's tactic is to accuse us, especially immediately after that, um, as uh, the saints say. Uh, Saint Theophilus, uh, one of the patriarchs, uh, patriarch before Saint Cyril, um, he says, what fear, what trembling, what uneasiness will there be for us when our soul is separated from the body? I don't mean to scare you, but like this is just to help, you know, uh, the, the church doesn't mention this theme very often throughout the whole year, just at this time and maybe a little bit during Basha. Um, so, so it's good for us to think about this. And this is what the monastic saints especially um, encompass their thoughts every, every night, even before um, sleep. He says, the fourth and strength of adverse powers come against us, the rulers of darkness, those who command the world of evil. They accuse our souls as in a lawsuit, he says, bringing before it all the sins it has committed, whether deliberately or through ignorance, from its youth until the time when it has been taken away. Exactly what happened with St. Matthew. So they stand accusing it of all it has done. Furthermore, what anxiety do you suppose the soul will have at that hour until the sentence is pronounced and it gains its liberty? So um, this is basically like the hour of affliction, right? Um, but on the other hand, he says, the divine powers stand on the opposite side, the angels, and they present the good deeds of the soul. Um, consider the fear and trembling of the soul standing in between the two groups. Um, he says, if, they, if the soul is worthy, the demons will receive their punishment and the soul will be carried away by the angels. Then thereafter will the scripture be fulfilled, sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Then your liberated soul will go on to that joy and ineffable glory in which it will be established. That's a good ending, right? Of course, the opposite is, is true for those who are not worthy. Um, <clears throat> we won't focus on, on that today. Um, <clears throat> but then he begins to say, well, where is the vanity of the world? Where is vainglory? Where is carnal life, enjoyment, imagination, ease, boasting, riches, nobility? Father, mother, brother, who could save the soul of its pains when it's burning in the fire and remove it from bitter torments? Um, this is something we need to think about now so we don't have to worry about later. And that's why the church reminds us, like we said, um, periodically about this. <clears throat> so since this is so, what manner ought we ought to give ourselves to holy and devout works? Um, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and the same thing is, is said, you know, um, even in uh, the evening prayers, um, we... Uh, we ask, um, when my soul departs my body, attend to me, defeat the conspiracy of the enemies, um, and shut the gates of Hades lest they swallow my soul. Um, <clears throat> so um, the enemy has a conspiracy against us, um, even if we're not aware or, or realizing. Um, so uh, St. Peter in his epistle says, um, because the world is ending, right, um, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? So because this world is passing away and my life is going to end one day, then we have to focus on living a holy life, looking for and hastening the coming day of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, and then he says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven. And our, our goal is the kingdom of heaven, um, where righteousness dwells. Um, so now let's get to, actually, that's just a big introduction of what we're going to talk about today. So um, Dorotheus of Gaza, a 6th century a monastic saint who wrote about spiritual and psychological you know, issues, um, uh, 
speaks about one very important virtue that is needed for a righteous person in order to um, not necessarily be accused by the evil one on the day, right? Um, so there's a specific virtue that helps tremendously in, in a circum this circumstance, as well as help lead us on the path of repentance, um, like St. Augustine of today, and, and finding peace when there is troubles uh, around us. Um, because, of course, none of us wants to be in the position that we just read about, right? Um, and, of course, it's better for us to accuse ourselves before the accuser um, rightfully accuses us. Most of the time for the righteous, it is a false accusation or incorrect accusation or an accusation about something that we've done and repented and been forgiven of. So all that stuff doesn't matter. Um, nevertheless, they do try for for almost every righteous person, probably every person in general, they try when the soul leaves the body, even with St. Anthony the Great. Okay. Um, so we'll take something from, from one of uh, Dorotheus of Gaza's uh, uh, writings about self-accusation, uh, because I think this is very appropriate um, at this time to remind ourselves um, this is not a very popular uh, concept, especially in today's society, but nevertheless, for our spiritual growth, it's essential, <clears throat> as he says. So um, he says here, uh, let us examine, brethren, how it is that at one time a man hears a disparaging remark and passes it by without being disturbed, as if he had hardly heard it. Another time he hears it and is immediately disturbed. So he's saying, have you ever had an uh, experience in your life when people are accusing you or saying wrong things about you or even true things about you um, in a negative manner, trying to stir you up, and it doesn't phase you? See, and haven't you had other circumstances in your life where the same thing happens and you blow up, right? I think all of us have, have probably experienced both, right? And it says, what is the reason for the difference of why am I calm sometimes and able to bear this? And... Um, uh, furious other times and unable to bear. <clears throat> so he gives in general three basic reasons. Um, uh, so um, the first one is about a story of a young monk that he, he, he saw. Nothing ever troubled him when the monks would accuse him and insult him um, and uh, do wrong things to him. So he's like, I have to go and interview this this monk. Um, so so he asks, he, he gives him a frustration. He says, you know, please tell me, explain to me how how you're able to bear this. Um, <clears throat> so um, he he says, um, oh, I just have to regard them as trivialities or put up with it as man puts up with the barking of a dog. He says, oh, these guys, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so. He, he heard this and he was very saddened at the response. And he said to him, has this guy found a way? Um, certainly not. <laughs> and he signed himself and he went about his way. I'm going to pray for him uh, as, as well as myself. So this is the wrong way of how people are able to endure it. They're just full of pride. Um, and sometimes we're able to endure it because we're like, oh, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, I'm, I'm good. Um, this is not the way that we endure this type of, of evil talk, <clears throat> right? Um, so that's the first, <laughs> the first way, um, which is not a way at all. Um, <clears throat> the second one is just spiritual growth, right? When we are strong spiritually, we're able to endure the trials and temptations um, around us. And um, it's a, a simple concept, but it's true. Um, so he says, when a man is at prayer or spiritually at rest and is in a good disposition, he bears with his brother and is not disturbed. So one of the tools is just get close to God, and you realize, well, Christ was suffered all of these things and more, and he was without sin, and I am without sin, and this is not even a fraction of compared to what. So let me take this as a blessing. <clears throat> right? um, the, the third reason is if I have, he says, if I have uh, love or affection towards the accuser, then um, I can bear it easier. Um, <clears throat> okay, so these are the three reasons. Um, 
typically what happens when a person, um, according to Dorotheus of Gaza, when we are accused or uh, uh, insulted or whatever, even um, online or in person or whatever, um, we have the inclination to defend ourselves, to, to accuse the person who's accusing us. Um, to correct their understanding. Oh no, you, you, you messed up in this uh, uh, explanation. You don't understand. I said, let me tell you, let me explain to you the real truth, right? So, um, and then we get angry or, or zealous. And sometimes we say, this is for a good purpose, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um, because this is the devil's method of operation, um, it's obvious that it's not proper for us to accuse others, right? And even if someone is accusing us, it might not be proper, but that's not the spiritual way to respond or to think about it. <clears throat> um, again, the, what Dorotheus of Gaza says is not typically going to be accepted, at least at first. But he says, how do we prevent this anger from coming? He says, the root cause of all these disturbances, if we are to investigate it accurately, is that we do not accuse ourselves. We need to accuse ourselves. Even if, even if what they say is, is not right, we'll get to that in a second. Um, he says, hence we have all these commotions that we never find rest. So the idea is we want to, we want to be at peace. Um, even if sometimes we feel that we're right, but we're not at peace, then it's not good. Um, so he says we're, we never find rest. Um, we attempt to achieve peace of soul and to take a straight road to it, yet we never come to the point of accusing ourselves. This is true, isn't it? He says, if anything happened to that person, some punishment, a dishonor, or a kind of trouble, he would accept it as if he deserved it. And he would never be put to confusion. This man would be completely free from him. So he says, we would be very joyful and very peaceful whenever, um, wherever we go, if we are always accusing ourselves. Of course, we don't go to an extreme. So there's a difference between self-accusation and self-hatred. We don't hate ourselves and we don't... Um, uh, put ourselves down to the point of, you know, um, having um, low self-esteem or depression. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But I think most of us probably don't do it enough, <laughs> including us. Um, so he says, well, what if um, someone might say, suppose a brother troubles me and I examine myself and I find that I've not given him any reason. How can I accuse, how, how can I accuse myself if what they're saying is not true? Um, uh, he says, if a man really examines himself in the fear of God, he will usually find that he has given a cause um, for offense. Um, even if you feel you're innocent in that particular situation, um, it's likely, he says, that another time he is offended. Maybe you did that same thing to that person sometime before. Or maybe you did it to someone else. Um, or maybe you can just, he said, um, you have offended someone else. Um, <clears throat> so, he says, you can always find a reason to accuse yourself. If we're working on our salvation, it doesn't really matter the truth at this point because God is the one who will defend us against our accusers. Just what happened like with St. Anthony. He didn't open his mouth. Um, <clears throat> so, so I need to ask myself, did I ever do the same thing maybe and get away with it um, with that person or someone else? Um, I need to ask myself that. Um, Dorothy says, if, if a person searches himself with the fear of God, he will find that he was always given a cause um, for his own difficulty. Um, <clears throat> so um, it's kind of like saying, uh, let's say one time you're driving along, and um, this happened to me once, um, stopped at a stop sign, I saw the police officer, and then I went. Then he pulled me over and gave me a ticket. It's like, what? I didn't do anything wrong. I saw him, and then, I, then after that, I began to think, um, how many times did I uh, did I do that wrongly? Um, so I, I deserve more tickets than that. <laughs> Thank God that was, uh, I didn't get any after that. But the idea here is we need to ask ourselves, how many times have we done something wrong and gotten away with it? That's, that's what we should be thinking about, not about the other person. Like, because once we start accusing ourselves, um, it doesn't matter anymore. And we can love and forgive and accept our uh, brother or whoever it is, um, because that's not the point. The point is um, correcting myself, <clears throat> not others. So sometimes you say, but this person made me angry. Or I, I could have been fine 
Uh, but then he came along and said this one thing, and it's all his fault, right? So Dorotheus of Gaza explains this as well. Um, <clears throat> he says, well, the first thing we need to ask, well, why am I so angry? <laughs> That's the first question. Most likely, um, as he says, it's stemming from something else wrong inside. He says, there's a case of a man minding his own business, sitting at peace and quiet, and when a brother came upon him and said an annoying word to him, he is put out by it. And from the circumstances, he thinks that he is justifiably angry. It's, he says, it's not my fault. <laughs> uh, and he speaks against the one who troubles him, saying, if he had not come and spoken to me that, and annoyed me, I would not have been at fault. Um, <clears throat> so um, he's saying, most likely, the anger is stemming from a sin or a weakness inside of me that I haven't addressed yet. Um, he says, this is delusion <laughs> for you to think this. Um, this is false reasoning. For it was not the one who spoke that put him in a bad mood. He only revealed that what was inside of him. Um, <clears throat> so uh, because we get angry at that, that means there was a sin that was inside of us that we were not aware of. Um, <clears throat> and he was saying the same idea of an example of an animal or a horse who is able to carry a heavy load right? when he's healthy. But when he's sick, he, he falls to the ground even if it's a very light load. Um, <clears throat> she said, what is the sickness? It's the sin. The sin is is um, allowing us or not allowing us to bear the load of uh, uh, the tribulations and trials around us. But when we're strong spiritually, we can bear anything by the grace of God. <clears throat> okay. Um, and that's what happened with the, the, the lives of the saints. So just some last points um, from St. Dorotheus of Gazi, he says, um, when, when we have this tribulation, we have to, how much have we asked ourselves, how much have I prayed about this and put it in the hands of the Lord? Um, uh, and there's many, many psalms that where uh, the psalmist speaks about these types of tribulations and even more so, and um, finds comfort and solace in God. Um, who is in control of all. Um, so that's something I, I should ask myself. Another thing, we, we speak to our father of confession. We speak to our spiritual guide. We ev truly evaluate and, and try to find any weakness in ourselves so that we can repent and, and be cleansed and be strong. <clears throat> right? um, another thing, we need, again, to turn the eye in and not out, out. Um, and don't focus on the person, focus on you. Because you can't change the person, but by the grace of God, you can change yourself. Um, <clears throat> it's it's basic, but we just need to remind ourselves of this. Um, again, Dorothea says, each one of us follows the wrong path when we try on every occasion to accuse our brother and throw the burden of responsibility upon them. Well, they have to change. They have to be fixed. They're doing this wrong, right? Um, it's like turning to the... To the police officer and say, yeah, but you ran it too. Or you were speeding. Like, what do you have to do with him? He's, it's not even your job. <laughs> right? Um, it's not our job to accuse others. That's, um, like we said, that's the devil's job. Um, but uh, the, our job is to accuse ourselves. <clears throat> Each one of us is negligent and keeps nothing but demands that our neighbor keeps. It. He has to keep commands, but, but I'm free because I'm good. That's not the way to think. Um, Lastly, um, we just, uh, some, some more quotes from the Desert Fathers, I think that they are very helpful in, in these things because this is how the devil fought, fights a lot, the people who are growing and, and sometimes avoiding um, the tri tri tribulations and trials around them, the devil still finds ways, uh, even in the middle of the desert. So um, one of the Desert Fathers emphasis says, whatever temptation may come upon you, Say, this is happening because of my sins. Right? So any problem? Okay, it's because I'm a sinner. Anything good? Um, that's, be, that's, that's the grace of God. Right? So it's a simple way of, of uh, thinking about things. Even if your sin is not related at all to whatever is happening, saying this, this is a good experience for me to grow in, in, in my life. <clears throat> um, the last quote from St. Sinopheus and John, um, they said, let us always accuse ourselves for victory consists precisely of this. This is how we are victorious. 
all the efforts of the devil are directed towards separating us from each other. Um, that's what happened, right, in the Tower of Babel, right? That's what happened um, in a lot of the divisions that happened in the church, in the history of the church, right? <clears throat> um, for the devil clearly sees that the word of Scripture is fulfilled upon us, brother being helped by brother as a city firm and well defended. So when we're able to accuse ourselves, we're strong. When we're accusing others, we're weak. Kind of like what uh, we were talking about last Sunday. Um, so he says, may the Lord not permit him to fulfill his will in us, the devil's will in us. Um, may he crush him, according to the mind word of scripture, speedily under our feet. Like we say in, in um, uh, the prayers of, of the incense. Um, so as St. Paul says today in his epistle, may the Lord make us increase and abound in love for one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints and glory be to be now and to be 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 to be